this is a work of art. It does this all the time. All right. He's got me sweating. I'm laughing so freaking hard. All right, here we go. All right. I love you. <laughs> Come on, man. I got to get my introduction out. <laughs> you guys are going to get louder. Gosh darn you. Please. I am so... This is hard for me too. We started <laughs> together, right? I, you know. Anyways, oh, yeah. wait a minute. Okay, all right. So it is hot in here. All right. So you ready? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Come on, I'm man. Ready. We're not gonna ever start it. We're never. I'm so gonna. spiritual, dude. You know I am, dude, and I am praying right now for you, for you and everything else. And, and uh, <laughs> Come on. All right. Here, here we go. go. All right. Good afternoon, this is Anthony Glenn checking in with the Sit Rep Podcast, and today's guest is brother Barry Bull, retired Sergeant Major, social media influencer, let's freaking go. Hey, brother, it is good to see you. Yeah, man. <laughs> Look, I couldn't even get the podcast started, man, because we were laughing so hard, but yeah. first and foremost, man, cheers. Yeah, cheers, bro. On a, re on a successful retirement, how many years? 23. 20 years. Hey, got a drink to that. Let's yeah, that's see. That's right. Oh, man, that is tea. I didn't tell you to drink the whole beer, brother. I tell you, man, hell. <laughs> I can't help it. You know, it is Thirsty Thursday. <laughs> so, you know, and for me, that means drinking something, not what you, anyways. <laughs> All right, brother. So I ha we have so much to talk about. Yeah, yeah. All right. So what, for one, what made you get out of the Marine Corps? Oh, my gosh. Um, that's a tough one. You know, I mean, really... For me, it was the, you know, and I, I, I know I'm going to make people mad when I say this, but it's like the toxic followers. Oh, that's you good. Know? Um, it's, it's the, it's the, uh, the people that don't do their job. They collect taxpayer money. They have no interest on, on really honoring their contract, being a good Marine, being a good person. Um, and they're just, they just sit back and it's like, they're overly critical of you all the time. And they don't realize that like, I'm a real person and I'm not perfect mm -hmm. and I'm doing my damn best. And I just got tired of it. And I got tired of the politics of the 89, 99 community. People that really don't care about other people. They just care about themselves and how good they look. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I knew it. I just knew it was my time. You know, I had a mentor tell me, you know, 23, 24 years, that's like a sweet spot. Right. When you get there, see how you feel. And yeah. And I always say that I think social media ended my career. Um, but let me let me pause right there, because I, I, I definitely want to unpack that, because we're going to keep it real all the way real yeah. on this podcast. Yeah. And I always I wanted to give you not like voice. SDI inspection real. <laughs> can we like can we like you know, pan to a picture of Anthony doing it. Cause I have a bunch. Yes. Yeah, so just like put it up there right now. Okay. Not that real. That's really real. Now, the reason why I'm asking you these questions is because, you know, you have uh, grown, I think social media has been a, a gift to you as well because you've been able to amass a bunch of followers, right? Oh yeah. And you've been able to monetize that. How, how hard was that? And when did you start that journey? It wasn't hard at all. I mean, I think people gravitate towards authenticity I would agree with that. Yeah. You know, one of the one, I mean, you have some of the most viewed videos and content is like somebody on an iPhone freaking four on the beach, not highly edited or scripted. And they just, they're authentic. And I remember I just picked up my phone and I had no idea how to use my stories on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I asked another military guy, excuse me, another influencer. He's like, oh, this is how you do it. And so every morning when I was driving to the gym, random thoughts from a sergeant major, and I would just get on there and record. That's good. And people would start screen recording it, uh -huh. and they would share it and tag me. And I started getting flooded with followers. And in like less than six months, I had like over 10,000 followers. That's crazy. And yeah, you know, so it really was not difficult to, uh, to, to grow it, in my opinion. I just grabbed my phone and started sharing what was on my mind, what was on my heart, and, um, and that's pretty much it, yeah. 
Now, Brother Bull and I have been knowing each other for many years. We started in Charlie Company, right? I got a story to tell y'all. Look, Charlie <laughs> Company, dude. And right. we didn't, and it wasn't called the franchise back then. Nah, I don't know what. <laughs> It was Charlites. <laughs> it was Charlites. So if you guys don't know, Charlie Company is at MCRD San Diego where we train drill sergeants. And your your left shoulder. Lower at your left, <laughs> right your low, right your left, right and left, and the Lord and God and go. And if it's damn it, that's more like Paris Island. And let's, they're singing songs, you know, right? Lean back and set them down. And they poke your gut out on the down. And everything we do, got to do it right. And the your tail and the like it tight. And I'm like, can you get a, can I get a left can i just <laughs> can i get I just, a left or a right bro come on <laughs> and i love you i do i know you love the recruits i'm kidding anyways so now imagine trying to be serious down at mcrd with this guy so i got a story to tell you so when i checked in at mcrd he's San Diego, right now. he's like oh my god <laughs> there's a guy that called me on my phone and he said hey, uh, you need to get up here. And they were up north. I know yeah. you remember this story. I do. Now I'm a brand new drill instructor. I think it was around 2100, okay? So I got up north, and then the first sergeant told me to stay down in the barracks because they were doing the crucible hike. Mm -hmm. And then um, this infamous guy named uh, Barry Bull told me to <laughs> get your ass up here on the hill. So I started walking in the woods. Now, remember, I'm an East Coast Marine. I heard all kind of animals and everything. I get up there. Everybody's uh, hanging out. And then they told yeah. me that I need to stay on the boys. Yeah. Do you remember that? I do because, <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't, you know, <laughs> realize how segregated we were in the company, right? That's true. Yeah. Okay. So Anthony's a new hat. Automatically, he is the scum of the earth. <laughs> And when we found out that the first sergeant was like, and he's not a bad guy. Sorry. I love you. You know? And, um, I'm like, hell no, they, uh, these guys, he's coming up here. You know, I knew he had his gear. So I was, I knew he had it. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna call him. And, and the guys that were there laughing was, uh, Naranjo and Cruz Mark. They're like, you ain't going to call him. I was like, watch. I caught, so I called you uh -huh. and I said, you know, get the hell up here. And, uh, and I told, I, I did lie a little bit because I was like, a truck is going to be there to <laughs> yeah, pick you, you up. Yeah, you remember that. A truck's going to be there to pick you up, knowing fully well we didn't send the truck. But I knew that you, I felt like he wouldn't find a way <laughs> unless you felt like there was going to be like a link up point. And so uh, I remember because I was having to talk you through how to get up there. And I, and it was the next day was the Reaper hike. And, um, and so it was pitch black and you're <laughs> trying to come from the barracks up north up to the upper shelf and if i remember correctly you tried to come inside the million dollar head. head yep <laughs> and i was like and we're like looking at you like what are you doing dog was rolling up in here because you had I, because at the time you had the million dollar head yep and you had this the senior drill instructor hut yep uh-huh pretty self-explanatory who's allowed in there <laughs> yeah but in Charlie Company, we all, because at this time we were still using shelter halves. Yep, yep, yep. We had a drill instructor hooch. Yep. At the front of every house. Yep. And so basically new hats were not allowed in the million dollar head. So you had, you had third hats in there and Jay's in there. Sleeping. Sleeping. And I went in there and I had my sleeping And then he comes bag. in <laughs> and he starts rolling his stuff out and we're like, I'm like, what are you doing? You are not even welcome in here. <laughs> yeah. That was my first. I feel day. bad about it now that I tell it because I do remember it. He's he was making it up, dude. He's like, I'm gonna roll this out. This thing is gonna be Kush, Kush right here. He had the green and the black sleeping bag, and I'm like, dude. and we were all like, what are you doing, dog? <laughs> yeah, I remember. You that. ain't sleeping in here, bro. But the crazy first of all, you ain't sleeping. <laughs> yeah, I did stay up all night, y'all. I stayed up all night. The whole 24 hours because I was supposed to be watching the fire watch. And then the next day, I did the entire crucible hike, 10 miles with a full pack, 50 pounds on, running the entire crucible. Uh, I just want to say I really appreciate you for that because it was my introduction in the Charlie Company. But what it did is it conditioned me for understanding the principles of being um, accepted, mm -hmm. right? So going into that, the, the, that was the hardest the introduction is kind of like, hey, you got to be on your stuff. You know, I was already a runner. So, oh my gosh, going. You guys haven't seen anybody <laughs> rabbit like Anthony Glenn. I was like, wow. We used to just sit back and be like, whoa. 
Yeah, I could I could run back then, but but I definitely want to say you know uh, congratulations on your your successful transition. What was the hardest part for um, transitioning from the Marine Corps? Because you do have a a, a fitness uh, business right now, so you are yeah. an entrepreneur of two companies: your social media movement, right? Yeah. Uh, where you have uh, hundreds of thousands, almost how many followers? Sixty five and sixty five thousand yeah. followers and growing, right? And um, you also have your fitness business. Yeah. What made you get into fitness? I love adding value to people, man. I love helping them out. I love seeing them win. I love seeing them be better versions of themselves. I love believing in them when they don't believe in themselves. I see the light go on in their mm-hmm. freaking eyes, and I just that that's priceless. Yeah, that's the why, right? That is. It, I think it's awesome, man. So structuring that company and transitioning it uh, to a veteran entrepreneur, uh, what qualities have you used from the Marine Corps that you learned that, that help you transition into being a leader in your business? Yeah, I mean, it's there's so many of them. It's like, you know, get a mentor. That's good. Get a coach. Because I don't care who you are, you need a coach. Steph, Steph Curry is the best three-point shot in the NBA. He has a three-point shot coach. You know why? Because that guy sees things outside of Steph that Steph can't see. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady, best quarterback in NFL history, probably, as much as it hurts me to say that. Quarterback coach. Why? Not because that guy could throw the ball better than Tom, but because he saw things outside of Tom that Tom couldn't see. Get yourself a coach. Get yourself a mentor. Have a sounding board where you can go, hey, Anthony, does this sound stupid? And you go, yeah, Barry, it does sound stupid. All right, then I'm not going to do it because I know you've already been there. That's good. So mm-hmm. that's that's number one, man, because I get a lot of questions uh, still, right, from especially, let's say, junior officers. Mm-hmm. How do I be a successful whatever, right? Well, find somebody who's done what you're trying to do because the odds that they're out there are really, really good. That's true, yeah. They're, it's really good. You don't need to figure it all out. Think about you know, uh, being just inventive, right? Mm -hmm. The best inventions, it wasn't the first person that did it. It was all the people that came after that person and made it better. That's true. Yeah. Man, I mean, seriously, that that's really good. So, so what I'm hearing is that, uh, hiring a coach is like BZO in your weapon, right? Mm-hmm. You're shooting at the uh, the 200 yard line. That way, you can start hitting the target. They're they're there to refine you to make sure that you are focused on your vision, right? You, you skip the step. What's the step? The coach has to give you the target. They got to give you the expectation. Oh man! And if they don't give you that, you're gonna be spraying and praying, baby. That's true. That is true, man. And and without that target, and that's, you know, and that's why I tell young leaders, and still to this day in the Marine Corps, mm-hmm. you have to tell people what you expect of them. That's, that's the true. target. How can I be successful? Anthony, tell me how I can be successful. Well, Barry, you got to do steps one, two, and three. Well, guess what I'm going to go do? Steps one, two, and three. That's, the, and I'm glad we're having this conversation because I see this in my business that people, uh, when you have people's best interests at heart, the money will always follow, right? Or the results will always follow. 100%. But we also live in a microwave world where people want just a, they want it now, right? That's right. But I kind of feel like... Thank you, social media. Yeah. People don't deserve where, where, uh, to be where Barry Bull is if they're not willing to do Barry Bull shit. Let's just be real. Well, I mean, being real, I told you this morning, my son dropping him off to school, my 14-year-old, he's like, Dad, you're so lucky you get to work from home and, and do your thing and you get to go where you want, go to Costco, you know, when you want. And I'm like, okay, but I did 23 years in the Marine Corps, dude. Mm-hmm. You, you can't put, fast forward 23 years. I don't, I don't care how good you are at, at time travel. Mm-hmm. It don't work like that. You put the work in. You got to put the work in. You got to earn your stripes, man. Just like before the Marine Corps, when I was living life on the streets, you got to put your work in. No one's going to do your work for you. You got to put it in. You got to earn your stripes. That's it. That's, that's good. And, and I, another question that I wanted to, damn, you putting down that tasty yeah. beverage, man. Let, <laughs> Load me, let, me, let me go ahead and mm. catch up with you, brother. Oh, man, that's good. Yeah. This is actually coffee, y'all. It's actually not beer. Yeah. Uh, Mine is apple juice. This is Martinelli's. <laughs> we love you. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the hard stuff. Let's get down to the nitty gritty, right? Let's do it. What... Do what advice would you give Barry Bull, Lance Corporal Barry Bull, before you got out of the Marine Corps? If you had an opportunity to change anything about your career, 
Mm. What would it, what would it be? Um, because you did face adversity, of course. But you learn from that adversity. You were still able to overcome. Two things. What advice would you give uh, Lance Corporal Barry Bull? And the second question is, how has social media, uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly, condition you as a leader? Mm. The advice I would give Lance Corporal Barry Bull would be, you know, have the courage to be yourself 100% of the time. Okay, don't be who you th who people think you should be or who you think people think you should be. Mm -hmm. And I did that all the way up until, you know, really being a drill instructor. Because you didn't want to look weak. That's true. You know, you didn't want, I didn't. And Oh, you weren't weak, brother. <laughs> you know, and the thing is, 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 so as an NCO, what am I doing? I'm doing what I think an NCO should do. But later in life, later in my career, I realized for, for me, right, mm -hmm. I only have enough energy to be one person, and that's me. And that gained me a lot of support, and it, it also brought me a lot of enemies because I am the person where, you know, you remember Naranjo used to call me B-Rabbit because when you hit the I don't care button on Barry, yep. that's a dangerous place because I'm the guy that will go all the way. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And the thing is, 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 you know, a lot of people, I see them out there and they're, and they're trying to be, what should a sergeant be? Well, I think this is what a sergeant should be or a leader or whatever it is. And then they go, I'm going to try to be that. Just be you, man. Mm -hmm. Just be you. And that's why I always told the Marines after I learned that was I only have enough energy to be one person. And you know what? Yeah, I wear cut off Dickies and, and Chuck Taylors and... That's who you Pe are. People don't like that. They yeah. don't. They don't like that. But you know what? You didn't. You didn't walk a mile in my shoes, man. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's that's what that's the advice I would give Lance Corporal Barry Bull. Have the courage to be you, because that's who you are. That's because you're good enough. Be unapologetically yourself. That's authentic. Right. That's right? right. Yeah. Be humble, right? And 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 people can can be, because what's the arch enemy of humility? It's pride. But people hear that and they go, well, I am proud of myself. Well, that's not what I'm talking about. A humble person says, I've come a long way. I'm proud of who I am, but I got a long way to go. Mm -hmm. You're teachable. You're coachable. Yep. You know, so that's the advice that I would give him. What was the other question? Uh, the other question was, if, if what has adversity taught you? Um, how are you conditioned uh, to deal with all of the um, negativity? Because I've seen both. Both oh sides, gosh, right? Yeah. Um, oh how, how do you deal with that? Well, I mean, you know, I'd love to sit here and tell you, oh, you know, don't let the haters get to you. But you, and you know that you and I, I've, I've been emotional on the phone with you many times. Yep. Because mm -hmm. cause I ain't bulletproof. Yeah. You know, it does get to me. You know, it does get to me. It sounds great in theory. Don't let the haters get to you, right? But, but... One thing that I always, you know, um, try to think about is like, let's say it's social media, for example. I'm not, dude, I don't go to anybody's page and leave some funky comment on there about you or what you're, who you are or what you got going on. You know, so when I have somebody come and they're over here talking whatever on my, on my page, yeah, I take issue with that sometimes. But... What I'll tell them is, and what I think about, what I remember is, it says a lot more about you. Than it does about yourself. Than it does about me. What you yep. say, because where's it coming from? Right here, in your heart. And you're trying to put that negativity on me. That's not my negativity to, to own. That's yours to own. I hear you. I see you trying to put it on me. Sometimes it does get to me. Sometimes I go back to my old ways and I'm like, I live in Vista, California. There's a park right by my house. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and then I'm, I'm being real and I don't hear from those guys. I had a guy yesterday and he said something funky to me. I said, yeah, I am those things, but I own it. You know what? And I made a habit out of telling guys like you, looking you square in the eye. That's been my whole life, man. I never backed down from that stuff. So, you know, I mean, it's, how do you deal with that adversity? It's, it's resiliency, right? It, resilient, being resilient is not just, you know, 
recovering from adversity. It's how quickly you recover from adversity. Oh, man, I agree with that, too, man, because I, I've also faced uh, adversity as well. And I think there's the best thing that happened to me because what it did is it grounded me. Right. And it, yeah. it, 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 when when a lot of people, you know, there's a difference between uh, taking a loss and being defeated. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, taking a loss, you can recover from that. But being defeated, you can't recover from that. And what I've learned is, you know, people are going to be who they are, but you can't abandon your crown because of how people treat you, you yeah. have to continue to stay on your excellence regardless of, and it also is important on how, who's around you. So when you have people that are close to you as your friends, uh, your family and stuff like that, if you know your why, it doesn't matter how much adversity you face. I'm right. facing adversity right now. I can tell you guys, I'm facing adversity in my business right now. And guess what? I'm not going to abandon myself because of what other people are doing. I, ha you know, uh, I think the true resilience in anyone is to be able to uh, continue to look at your why, because just because you're you're in a situation to where uh, you may face hardship, that calamity is going to determine yeah. who you are and how you go through it. And every every situation in my life where I faced uh, a calamity, it was growth for me. Yeah. Uh, would you say the same thing? Yeah, I would also add to that, like, literally nothing in my life has ever turned out how I thought it was going to. <laughs> you know, and like, if we know that, why don't we just have an open mind? Here's mm -hmm. another one. I'm wrong at least one time a day, right? Yep. If I know that I am wrong a lot, let me put it to you, let me put it to you this way. When, when I'm wrong, I go into the situation, you know what I'm thinking? I'm right. <laughs> I'm a hundred. I'm a hundred percent right. What in the hell are you damn talking yeah, about? Yeah, you idiot. <laughs> right? Yeah. But if I know that I'm, I can be wrong. Why not just have an open mind, even when I think that I'm right? To me, that's what it comes down to. Are you receptive to the people that are in your life? Because you may have more experience in them. Mm -hmm. You may have a ton of influence over them. Mm -hmm. Why would you close the door on communication with them because of those two things? I don't think you should. I mean, because you don't lose anything you by don't. listening to them. Yeah. By giving them an avenue and giving them an open door with you, you don't lose anything. Mm -hmm. They may blow your hair back. And, and I do have another question for you. So you, you were very intent about uh, um, expressing some of the things that needed to be, uh, you felt uh, imperative to communicate to the Marine Corps, right? Yeah. And um, you had, got a lot of a positive feedback and some negative feedback, right? Mm -hmm. How a do lot. You, yeah, so specifically the BCP program, right? Oh my gosh. Okay. What uh, a and joke. the reason why. A I'm, joke, you guys. <laughs> the reason why I'm picking on that is because. <clears throat> On this podcast, we're going to talk about all things. You know, we're not going to sugarcoat anything. Um, I have somebody on the podcast that was able to make it to E9. So going all the way up to the very top of the enlisted community and, and, and having a big influence, where do you believe that the Marine Corps is falling short on change? Well, listen, I, you know, the BCP program is a flat out joke. I'm a realist. Do I expect BCP to be the Marine Corps' top priority? Mm -hmm. No, of course not, right? Like, that would be ridiculous. But we are, we change the tattoo policy overnight. We come out with some funky running <laughs> suit. Yeah. Who knows what kind of teams and marketing you had to put on that and money you had to spend. I don't, I don't know. I, I shouldn't even have to know or care. Because that junior Marine don't care. And the part that pisses me off about it is I was the one on the hook that had to look those devil dogs in the face and give them some BS political answer that I don't even believe in myself. Mm -hmm. And that's the disconnect. That's why I put that video out. Like, you know, whoever's up at Quantico, and you know who you are, you should have to come down here and look that devil dog. You should have to execute this program. You believe in it? Execute it. Oof. Because I'm telling you, I have voiced my concern. I've written, I've written, uh, written's not a word. 
So just in case you didn't know that, guys, and for everybody in the audience. I've written it. it. And then so I wrote it out of that. You know, I was like, dang, dude, motivator. But no, um, I've written point papers. Mm-hmm. And it falls on deaf ears. Why? Because commanders aren't evaluated on that. Oh. They ain't evaluated on that. Mm, come on, let's be real. That's true. If you're a commander, you have a mission. Okay? What's your unit? That unit's got a mission. Mm -hmm. You're going to meet it or you are not going to be successful. I didn't see BCP in there. Yeah. And everybody goes, why do we need 8999s? That's freaking part of the reason why, you moron. That's, that's, That's why. Okay? It's unfortunate that we need 8999s to help our left hand talk to our freaking right hand. Yeah. But that's really what it is. We're the people people. Yeah, you're the senior enlisted advisor to the commander. Well, we're the ones that care about the people. Yeah. And for first-term Marines, what a lot of them care about, and even past their first term, they love and want to be and emulate people that are good at their job. Yeah. Well, who's the resident experts? The mass arts, the master guns. Mm-hmm. But as they go further in their career, a lot of people come to the realization that that master guns, and I'm going to piss a lot of people off, man, but... They don't care about you. Go fix that jet. I don't care about your family. I, I've talked to Marines. I worked next to a master for four years. He never even asked me where I was from. And as a first sergeant sergeant major, I was that guy. Dude, what's up, dog? Tell me about yourself, man. Who are you? Yeah. Why, did, why did you join? And that's why you're the people people. That's serving leadership, I think, right? You should know everything about the people that work with you, right? Well, let me put it to you this way, okay? If you were in the hospital and your neck was broken and I was your sergeant major, and you're one of my company gunnies out there, okay? Mm-hmm. Would I have to call you up and say, hey, Anthony, just wanted to call you and tell you I don't give a damn about your neck, click? Or would I have to just never visit you or check on you for you to think I didn't care? Probably just never visit you, right? Yeah. Just never call? Yeah. You would come to the conclusion, Barry does not give a damn. That's true. So a lot of people don't realize it's a lot more about what you don't say. It's yeah. a lot more about what you don't do. And I'm going to say this uh, specifically for the camera. Look, Marine Corps, and you have to start changing how you communicate because young Marines are on social media. Okay, period. So social media is how communication is going. So you can either create change or react to change. Right now, the message is getting out. So we have to be able to evolve from that. They're not even serious about it. I'm just going to be real. Marine Corps, you're not serious about it. You ain't. You're, you're not. You have teams of people. You ain't serious about it. I made this suggestion. Take me. Take other influencers in the Marine Corps. Fly us around the country. You're serious about recruiting? You're ser- serious about that message that the Marine Corps puts out there? Put a team of influencers together. Fly us around the country, and we'll handle all your marketing and recruiting for you. That's what we will do. But it's adversarial, right? No, we don't want to work with you, Barry. Sergeant Major Bull, we don't want to work with you. What do we want to do? You put out an unprofessional post. You put a post out about BCP. That was unprofessional. Now you're speaking for the Commandant and the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. Because you have more influence than they do. Oh. That's real, dog. It is real, yeah. You get other sergeants, majors, and commanders that were calling. Didn't, don't, don't even know. They don't even know me. They're calling at the three and the four star level. Who does this, who does Barry think he is? That's got to be tough, man. You know, especially when you are doing it from your heart. It's petty. Yeah. And if it was a business, the Marine Corps is a business. Yeah. Well, I agree. It is a business. Seventy percent yeah. of your population are twenty five years of age or younger. And 99.9% of that population are all on social media. So you do what you want with those numbers. Yeah, that's true. You do what you want with those numbers, okay? You ain't getting rid of social media. You ain't getting rid of it. So forget it. All the old heads that are over here, Facebook, I don't use Facebook. Get out of here. I didn't didn't use it either. Yeah. And if you think about it like this, right? So if you want to um, influence a bunch of people, you put it on social media because people are going to look at it. One thing that I don't like about the... Um, well, it gives you a direct line. Yeah, direct line. That's why Marines loved it. They're like, dude, I had no idea that's what it was like to be a Sergeant Major. I didn't know that. Yeah. 
and then they can communicate with you. In addition to that, what I would say too, right? If for those of you who don't think that the Marine Corps is a business, then why is it United States Marine Corps, you get W-2s? Mm. It's a business. Mm. It's a business. No matter which way you look at it, mm -hmm. you get paid for doing work. Okay. That yeah, is a business, right? I think one thing that I, I see that I would change is that um, the Marine Corps eats its own, man. You know, I, I seen. <laughs> Dude, you're right. I love the Marine Corps now. Look, don't get me wrong. No matter how far you've come or how long you've been in, you're still a boot, right? Yeah. Come on. Tell me I'm wrong. Yeah. You always got somebody there. I had first sergeants that would tell me that. Oh, Sergeant Major, I ain't getting paid yet. Dude, do you think I really care about your money? You Marines don't give a damn about your money. I don't care. You're wearing the rank. Go out there and be it. That's tough. Don't, don't ever say that again to me, dog, because I don't care about your money. Don't, but that's a real thing in the 8999 community. Oh, I'm still frocked. I don't give a damn. I'm not that guy. You, you always going to have a seat at the big kids table with me. Yeah. Your voice is always going to count with me. Yeah. All right. And, and you know, you, you love the core, man. It, it, the transition that I definitely would tell anyone and the advice that I would give them is just make sure you're prepared to get out. Make sure all your administrative stuff, because I did bury the, I, I am going to say Dan something. He's like, Hey, hey, Anthony Glenn, man, uh, can, can, we got to do this disability. I said, and I'm proud to be an American. <laughs> yeah. I said, I got you, brother. But for the one thing that I definitely want to talk about, too, we, I want to transition from the Marine Corps, and I want to specifically talk about your uh, fitness business and what is the plan for that, okay? And um, how can people find you? Well, first of all, you know, the best place to find me is, is my Instagram, okay, at bull5277, all right? My, uh, my fitness company is No Bull Fitness, mm -hmm. all right? I'm on TikTok. you get John Legend and stuff? I'm on, I'm on. I, wanna, I just want to say. Well, I'm not, I mean, I just want to get, <laughs> we'll get top 40 coming at you live, 106.5 on the 110, Los Angeles, California. Thursday, 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 you know, um, but no. Yeah, I, uh, uh, Noble Fitness and my TikTok is growing. Mm -hmm. So you can find me there as well at bull52772. There's a lot of imposters out there. I get over 40 fake. Profiles created on me every really? single day. Are every you serious? Day. Every day. Wow. Yeah, every day. So, yeah, that's where you can find me. And, uh, you know, click the link in my bio, man, if you're serious about being a better you, if you're serious about growth, if you're serious about change, right? People don't, don't realize that sometimes, and, and, and I'm one of them. We can sit here and talk all day, but words and ideas don't make money. Action. They don't make change, dog. They don't create a business. Look at your business, Anthony. I know I've been knowing you for years, bro. And I'm proud of you, man. Thank you. I'm proud to, to know you. And I, I would, I mean, I'm serious. I would go to battle for you. And I know you would do the same for me. And it's not, yes, it's the Marine Corps Brotherhood, but it's more than that as well. And I appreciate that, man, because I'm proud of you too, man. And, and you know, one of the biggest things, man, is if you know people's heart, it doesn't matter what they say. If you know it's coming from a genuine place. Mm -hmm. And being able to see, like, even in the staff and CO page, man, sometimes I just don't get it, man. Oh it's my like, gosh. this is a that is the biggest. That's the <laughs> j biggest joke of a page. Oh, it's terrible. It's, it's a, the brotherhood, man. I, I every don't, cynical person is on there. Well, name one hater doing better than you. Yeah, think about I can't because I don't even pay attention to him, dog. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's like like uh, Steve Smith. I remember I was watching outtakes from Steve Smith, the old receiver from the Carolina Panthers. Mm -hmm. He had this uh, cornerback covering him, talking all this trash. And at the end of one of the plays, Steve Smith grabbed the back, grabs his back, and he's like, what are you doing? He's like, I had to look at your name because I didn't know who you were. Whew. I mean, I don't even know who you are, dog. <laughs> you over here. And, that's, and, and really, I've had some people get very confrontational with me, and that's what I've told them. Like, hey, dog, I can tell you're upset, and this is what I'm going to tell you. Stop letting me take up so much space in your head. That's true. <laughs> All right, because I don't, I'm just going to be, and I know this sound, makes me sound pompous, I don't even know who you are. It doesn't. And you thought about me so much. You watch my stuff. You click on my little messages thing. You typed up the little message. And who knows how many times you had to delete it, right? You probably like <laughs> typed it up like, ooh, that was a little bit, that was a little too soft. That was a little too angry. You know what I'm saying? And then, but then you sent it. Uh. For what? For what, dog? <laughs> what, what are you trying to teach me? Exactly. What are you trying to get me to come to the realization of? You're a loudmouth. 
I could have told you that without if you just asked me. No, it's been that way for since you know, I've known you. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but hey, man, I, I definitely appreciate you. I'm proud of you. So, uh, the fitness company, retired marine. I mean, what's what what's next, man? What's what is the vision of the fitness company? Where do you want to take that? Where do you see? What's the vision of that? Yeah, I mean, really, I want to uh, build the team. Okay. I want to have products that I market separately mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, because right now what I do is, is strictly one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, but I want to have things that are available for, for, uh, for sale that basically a person can get specific benefit from it, right? Let's take, for example, you know, um, a 30-day pull-up program mm -hmm. or, you know, abs in 30 days. I give you a week of meals. I give you a specific workout routine to follow. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and, and maybe that costs you, you know, nineteen ninety nine. That's great, man. You know, so it's. I've it's, seen the improve. I've seen the uh, the posts and stuff on, on social media and I've yeah. seen the impact that you made. Fitness um, is not a lot of people think that fitness is all about looking good. It's about feeling good. It's mental, spiritual, emotional. It, it, it ties into a lot of things. So you know, uh, uh, shout out to you for doing God's work. Well, let's put it another way. Let's say you're on vacation in Bali and you don't like what you see when you look in the mirror. You're depressed. You're on medication. Are you really enjoying that vacation? No. So when we talk about look good, feel good, it's real, bro. Think about how good you feel when you go get, go get your hair cut or go get your car washed. Yep. I get my car washed. I'm looking at, I'm like, you can't even look at me. <laughs> you're over there with your dirty car. You can't even see me, dog. You go get your hair cut. You're walking around like your stuff don't stink. Yeah. When you start working on, you know, your individual fitness and really your internal fitness, your health. Mm -hmm. Right. Because what has fitness taught you? It's taught you that you can do more than what you thought. Yep. It's taken you to a place of uncomfortability probably every single time you do it. Yeah, that's true. And you keep going back to it. Why? Because you know that you're getting better every time you do it. And that's, that's what it is. I could tell you about the people that have lost 50 pounds, 100 pounds, but it's more than that. It's them going from being suicidal to I'm excited to wake up every day. Mm. That's a feeling. Yeah, it's a lifestyle change. It's a lifestyle change, right? Not like we were talking earlier. You go to the doctor, what's the first thing he's going to tell you or she's going to tell you? Eat right and exercise. And then we don't listen. And then what happens? We go back. Here's some pills. Yep. And that's and then you get things. on. Yeah. And you, yeah. and you get on one prescription after another, after another, after another. And before you know it, man, you look back and you're like, how did I get so screwed up in my life? Yeah. See, I can't put a price on my ability to go to the pool and take my shirt off and feel good. Yeah. Or throw my uh, throw, throw the football around my son in the front yard. That's priceless. That's quality of life. Yeah, that's true. That is your life. It is, yeah. Yeah, and what you put in is what you're going to get out at the end of the that's day. That's right. Yeah. Well, man, this has been one of the best podcasts that I've had, and this is outside of real estate. I will tell you, man, this is fun, brother. Yeah, we didn't even sing. <laughs> no, for real. How we run <laughs> till the midnight sun. Wheels go round and round. Yeah, I mean, we could do Spanish. We can, you know what I'm saying? Tienes razón, <laughs> mi corazón arroya, tiene dueña. No eres mi opción, eres mi prioridad. Contigo quiero estar mil años más. Déjame ser. That's Spanish. It's a whole other language. It's just, I don't think it's going to catch on. I'm sorry for everybody that's from Spain or anywhere. I'm kidding. <laughs> Man, now you know why I got my brother on here, coming on here. We talked about so many things. The Marine Corps, we talked about uh, building people up. We talked about uh, your transition as a veteran entrepreneur. Um, I'm super thankful for you coming on the podcast. This is new for us. Uh, this is one of the, uh, the veteran um, um, influencers and business owners. So make sure you follow me at Tony Glenn II on Instagram and TikTok. And then also make sure you follow the, uh, the Sit Rep podcast at wire10k.com. And we are out. Peace.